Many blockchains have labeled themselves Ethereum killers, boasting that they have better technology than Ethereum does. However, in today's video, I'm going to tell you why it is my opinion that Ethereum will never be killed. I do like these other blockchains and I invest in projects like Solana, Binance Coin and Polkadot. However, I do not think these blockchains will overtake Ethereum and kill Ethereum. And in today's video, I will show you why I believe all of these blockchains can coexist in the space. Base. Of course, if you enjoy the video, remember to subscribe. We're fast approaching 200 subscribers and it would be much appreciated. Also, remember I am not a licensed financial advisor, so nothing in this video is financial advice. So, the first thing I want to begin with is what's wrong with Ethereum? Why would any project actually want to kill Ethereum? Well, the big problem with all blockchains and not just Ethereum is the blockchain trilemma. Now, what the blockchain trilemma is, is it is hard for all blockchains to achieve decentralization, so it's not controlled by one single party or a few parties, scalability, so it's able to make tons of transactions per second with low fees, and security, so the blockchain will remain secure and cannot be breached or broken. Now, Ethereum is highly decentralized. It achieves the decentralized component of blockchains as it has 110,000 validator nodes. However, many people question Ethereum's scalability. This is as if a transaction requires multiple confirmations before reaching a consensus, it will take longer than if a single party confirms it. However, if that single party confirmed it, it would not be decentralized, it would be centralized. So since it takes so many parties to validate the Ethereum network, it is very decentralized, but not that scalable. And the fees because of this are quite high. So many blockchains come in boasting lower fees than Ethereum in order to kill it. Now, security on the Ethereum blockchain is very good. However, Ethereum are changing from proof of work to proof of stake, which is slightly less secure in order to get down the gas fees of Ethereum. So this is another aspect of the blockchain trilemma. So as we can see, there is a big trilemma with blockchains and it's difficult for them to achieve decentralization, scalability and security. I hope that made sense. So, we'll look at can Ethereum actually be flipped? So, stacks of projects have called themselves Ethereum killers. In fact, back in 2017, and I wasn't doing crypto at all in 2017, but as I've seen and looked into history, there were tons of projects that were calling themselves Ethereum killers like 4chain. None of these projects have at all succeeded. And in 2020, Ethereum still is the biggest project in the DeFi space. Many of these projects that have said they can kill Ethereum include Solana, Cardano, Polkadot, Tezos, Binance Smart Chain, Elgarant, and more. However, in today's video, I'm only going through the valid projects that can actually have a chance. There's no point looking at the invalid projects as many, many projects call themselves and label themselves Ethereum killers. So, many of these projects are actually just Ethereum clones, but the thing they do differently to get fees, lower fees, is they raise the gas limit. Now, when you raise the gas limit, this means it takes more computational power, so better equipment to validate the network. This means those individuals who do not have this good equipment to validate the network will be cut out and they can't validate the network. This means less people will validate the network and Ethereum will be more centralized as it has less people validating the network. Any individual can be a node and validate the network, so this is meaning it's going to be a little bit less decentralized, all these Ethereum killers. So, in my opinion, many of these projects are solving Ethereum's gas fees in a way Ethereum doesn't want to solve. Ethereum needs to be decentralized, it needs to be the most decentralized project there is. It's decentralized finance, not centralized finance, we're not talking central banking. And also, the gas fees are not that high for large transactions, they're flat fees. $100 is not a high fee for a transaction of $150,000. 
Also, another big problem with all these projects is they don't experience the same demand Ethereum does. Ethereum experiences stacks of demand, and because of this, Ethereum has had quite some scalability issues. These other projects haven't actually been tested like Ethereum, so I do think this is one reason why Ethereum can't be flipped. Also, if we look, Ethereum has a massive advantage over these other projects. You can see that Ethereum has a $382 billion market cap. The next biggest DeFi project is Binance Coin with a 99 billion market cap, and then Cardano and Polkadot. Bitcoin does not play in the decentralized finance space, so we're not comparing it. Bitcoin is totally different than DeFi. DeFi is programmable money. This is money that has conditions attached. If you don't know what this money is, I suggest you watch my video on what Ethereum actually is before you watch this video. So, more on how Ethereum cannot be flipped. Bridges are basically something that allows tokens or data to be transferred from one blockchain to another, providing cap cap compatibility between chains. Ethereum doesn't need to build bridges to any chain at all. Ethereum just does not do this. However, every other crypto does this. Binance builds bridges to Ethereum. Cardano builds bridges to Ethereum. Everything has a bridge to Ethereum. Everything is reliant on Ethereum. So right now, all these killers are even relying on Ethereum, and this isn't that good for them. Also, Ethereum is used by 359 companies, including Amazon, Microsoft, McDonald's, and more. However, it's debatable as to how much McDonald's and Microsoft use Ethereum. It's not really that much or that valid, but Amazon Web, Web Services actually uses Ethereum heaps, and this is one of the biggest companies in the world. No one uses these other blockchains. Also, all the big projects are launched off Ethereum. Are they Chainlink, Polygon are just a couple of massive projects that are launched off Ethereum, and these projects are not launched off the other blockchains. All NFTs are on Ethereum, and $5 billion is staked on the Ethereum network. As you can see, Ethereum does $30 billion in settlements per day. This is by far bigger than any other blockchain. It dwarfs Bitcoin's amount of settlements, and Ethereum is currently the biggest blockchain for this by far. $65 billion is locked in DeFi, and nearly all of this is locked in Ethereum. None is locked in these other projects. Also, decentralized indexes have complete or exchanges have taken off, and Uniswap is the biggest decentralized exchange. This means people can buy and sell cryptocurrency without the use of a centralized party. Uniswap is completely run off Ethereum. So Ethereum has a huge lead here. And as we can see, some of Ethereum's projects like Polygon and Aave are doing fantastic. Okay, so now we're going to get to the stage of the video where I'm going to compare Ethereum to the other projects to see how they fare up. However, if I compared Ethereum's current technology to these product projects, then it would make Ethereum seem not that good and quite far behind. So I'm going to compare Ethereum 2.0, which is launching in just a couple of months and should be done by 2022-2023. So, Ethereum 2.0 will implement sharding and proof of stake. I'm not going to go into what these are for time reasons. However, this will make the network far more efficient and it should reduce these gas fees. Ethereum currently handles 300 to 100 transactions per second. This congests the network and it means the gas fees are so high. However, Ethereum 2.0 will do around 100,000 per second. To put this in comparison, Visa only does 1,700. So, 100,000 per second is more than is needed. That is... That that is almost too much. So as we can see, this is going to make Ethereum a far more efficient blockchain. All right, so let's compare Ethereum to the valid Ethereum killers. I'm gonna start with Polkadot. This is a huge project made by an Ethereum co-founder called Gavin Wood. Polkadot has some amazing projects launched off it, such as Kusama, which is a huge project. However, not as big as Ethereum's projects like Uniswap. Polkadot can do a thousand transactions per second right now, which is heaps, and it's honestly more than enough. However, Ethereum 2.0 will be technological support technologically superior in this regard as well. Also, DOT builds bridges to Ethereum, and Polkadot is roughly 11% of Ethereum's market cap, yet it only produces 0.7% of Ethereum's transaction volume. So I think Polkadot's a great project, I invest in it, but Ethereum has a clear lead, and it doesn't look like with Ethereum 2.0 this will change. Another good one is Binance. Binance have real strong projects run off it, like PancakeSwap, which is a decentralized index or exchange it's not as big as Uniswap, but it's gaining ground. 
Binance Chain, however, does build bridges to Ethereum, and Binance Chain is really great, has low gas fees, everyone loves it, it has heaps of use, however, it's highly centralized, around 30 to 60% of Binance is owned by the Binance team. This defeats the purpose of decentralized finance, and I do believe just for the reason that it's highly centralized, it will not be used as much as Ethereum in the long run, especially when Ethereum gets better technology on it. However, I do love Binance, it has heaps of utility for the Binance platform, and Binance is a centralized exchange that people can use, and I think Binance will go well in the future. However, in my mind, it doesn't compete with Ethereum. They're different things right now. So, Cardano is the next one that's competing with Ethereum. Cardano is yet to actually have smart contracts, and Cardano has very few projects run off it. However, Cardano has a slow roadmap that they're trying to perfect, and it has some real-world use case, like partnering with the Ethiopian government and helping with African children, so I do think Cardano is one of my favorites right now. And in Cardano's final form, it will process 2.5 million transactions per second. Ethereum 2.0 will only do 100,000. However, I'm not sure what the point is for this many transactions. I don't think either of them are going to get congested. At this current stage, Ethereum is currently doing a lot better than Cardano. It's a lot higher in the market cap than Cardano. It's a lot more used than Cardano. And Ethereum looks like it has a clear advantage. Solana is a new project, and I don't know much about it. It's the only one out of these four that I've mentioned that I'm not invested in. However, Solana is very solid. It has a few solid projects launched off it. Not as much as Binance, Ethereum, and Polkadot, however, pretty solid. And currently, it does 70,000 transactions per second. This means, in its current form, it is the one that is the fastest of all of the blockchains right now, and it will be able to do 700,000 per second. However, I still do think Ethereum's technology will be very competitive with Solana, and Solana has a management team right now, it's a bit more centralized, and Solana's management team is honestly not that transparent from what I can see, so I don't believe that Solana is going to be overtaking Ethereum anytime soon. Let's conclude our findings. Ethereum is currently light years ahead of the Ethereum killers. It's used way more. It has so much more money locked up in it. It has so much more staked. And Ethereum 2.0 will actually make the technology competitive and even better than most of these new technologies, meaning what's the point of transitioning from Ethereum to Polkadot ecosystem when Ethereum 2.0's technology will be just as good or better? Ethereum competitors also have not been tested at the same level as Ethereum does, and as of this blockchain trilemma, I do believe a lot of their decentralization will be sacrificed. We will never see another network as decentralized as Ethereum, and this is great for the crypto space. So, despite this, I believe these other projects are not useless. They will all have their own part in the space of cryptocurrency. I believe they'll all grow together. Binance Smart Chain can be used in the Binance ecosystem. Polkadot's very good at achieving interoperability. <clears throat> and Cardano is providing a very strong use case for the third world, which Ethereum currently isn't doing. So I believe these all have their own merits. So they can all survive together, in my opinion, and Ethereum won't be killed. I believe Ethereum will be huge in the long term, and I have most of my money in Ethereum, as this is by far the safest bet on DeFi in the future. However, I do believe all these projects can do well together. If you enjoy the video, please remember to subscribe. We're getting up on 200 subscribers and it'd really be much appreciated. Thanks for watching the video.